The future of Twitch is uncertain, especially nowadays where there are serious competitors in the live streaming space such as YouTube or even possibly Kick if you're into that. And even though Twitch is technically the top live streaming website, lately they've been making a lot of hard decisions and crazy announcements. So basically what this spells out is that even though Twitch is on top, they're not willing to continue maintaining the practices that are keeping them in that position. Instead, they want to become a profitable business. So whilst other live streaming platforms are willing to spend money indiscriminately, Twitch is seriously cutting costs. So what will this mean for the position of Twitch in the future in the market? Will Twitch become a less viable streaming platform or a less lucrative streaming platform for creators? And ultimately, how will these decisions now affect Twitch's future? So the CEO of Twitch, Dan Clancy, recently held a community update live stream on the official Twitch live channel where he had a lot of unexpected and surprising and interesting things to say. So I'm just going to give you the highlights, the first of which I think is really important and I'll explain after. Afterwards. So this is where it kicks off. I wanted to do this stream because, as you know, I think it's important for us to be transparent with all that's happening. One of the things that makes Twitch so special to work at is the community, and the community is all of you that are watching here, and of course, all of those people that are working at Twitch. Yesterday, of course, was a very tough day. I'm going to talk for a few minutes about some of the stuff that I mentioned in the letter to the company, but then I'm primarily here to answer questions. In terms of what questions, you can ask questions about the layoff. Um, we also also had a number of announcements earlier this week and you can feel free to ask questions about any of them or anything else that is top of mind. I think that it's really important to be open, to be honest and to be direct and this is something that I genuinely commend Dan for. I think that he's made a lot of effort to embed himself in the Twitch community but while still being the CEO he has to represent the interests of the company and of Amazon obviously and I feel like he's done a great job of being very communicative about the things that he has to do whilst also being ready to stand there and say I'm going to answer questions I'm going to face the music and I'm going to explain why I've done everything that I've needed to do and this it makes a lot of sense I genuinely feel like this is the best way to address this situation given what it is. Also, the comment about yesterday being a tough day, Dan is referring to the recently announced layoffs at Twitch from the 10th of January, where they just cut over 500 employees and essentially they're reducing the workforce by about a third. But also, Dan recently announced that Twitch is going to be shutting down in South Korea and this was due to the network fees exceeding 10 times the costs of running Twitch in other countries. So Dan goes on to justify these changes by providing the following explanations. We need to make sure Twitch is the right size so that we can be here for a very long time. We have a very important mission. Twitch is unique in terms of many of the social platforms out there. Many of you come to create communities here or to be part of communities here. I don't think the other platforms are like Twitch. And it's critical that Twitch is here, not just today, not just tomorrow, but 50 years from now and 100 years from now. And our job is to run Twitch in a manner that can ensure its prosperity, its thriving, and that it's here for you and your communities that you've built. So on one hand, I understand the idea that Twitch as a company just has too many Many employees or they're operating at a capacity that is simply too large or greater than what is necessary for the company to operate in an efficient manner. But it's funny that at this particular point in time, they're thinking of considerations of 50 years and 100 years and they're talking about how the community is unique and that they have a unique mission, but that doesn't necessarily reflect the history of how Twitch has been run, especially since they've been acquired by Amazon. Twitch has been running somewhat of a Netflix model where they're not necessarily necessarily focusing on profitability, they're focusing on building up the viewer base and increasing the quality of their content until eventually they can get to a point where they can now start to generate revenue off of the uh, larger community that they've built over time. But the way that Amazon has been running Twitch or the way that Twitch has been running as part of Amazon doesn't necessarily reflect the ideal of 50 years, 100 years from now being a totally independent, profitable, viable business. It's been run as as if it is a company within Amazon that's not necessarily specifically focused on being profitable, but still being valuable. So this is a very big turn. This is a very big change in the mentality that they're employing with the operations of Twitch at this point, it seems. It's quite common for tech companies to size their organization 
thinking about where they might be in three or four years. And of course, we have big dreams at Twitch in terms of where we're going to be and how we're going to be able to continue to grow with live streaming. However, we really need to run the company based upon where we're at today. We've implied this before where we say we need to run it sustainably, but you know, I can be, I'll be blunt. We aren't profitable at this point. Amazon has been extremely supportive of Twitch and big thing for being sustainable over time is ensuring that we don't lose money. And that's a big part of my job because that's going to be what makes sure we can be here for a long term. It's funny, one moment we're talking about 50 to 100 years and then we are talking about right now. And I feel like that might be quite a large contrast for a lot of people to be able to grasp. But in a way, it does make sense because we know about the fact that large corporations, tech companies, their corporate management are always looking for ways to make the company more efficient, whether that's to increase revenues or increase profit or to expand the business or to increase the workforce or decrease the workforce to lower costs, for example. So with the specific example of Twitch in this situation, I think that Dan and the corporate management of Twitch and Amazon in general, who also have announced a lot of layoffs too, looking towards the potential incoming recession. And I think that a lot of people are projecting or considering the fact that there might be a recession in the future. And so to essentially prevent Twitch from becoming an even larger cash burden on Amazon, considering the fact that they're technically losing money, it makes sense to cut the workforce, to reduce costs, to ensure that if a recession does arrive in the future, that Amazon is in a situation to where they are somewhat a little less exposed to the risk or they're slightly more protected against Twitch being an even greater drag on them. In fact, we could even argue that maybe the intention isn't even necessarily for Twitch to become profitable, but at least that idea or that directive is a great justification for cutting costs across the board for the platform and the business as a whole. So considering everything that we've seen and that we've heard from Dan, we got to ask a really important question. How exactly does Twitch perceive their performance in the past? How do they perceive their current performance? And how are they projecting or what are they projecting of their performance in the near future? So I was able to find some of the most important statistics for Twitch's recent performance. Now, obviously, this is early 2024. So all of the information and the stats for 2023 probably aren't necessarily available right now, but this will do. So if we look at since 2016, when we're looking at annual revenue, it started out at, well, it was at 270 and in 2022, that was 2,800. And considering the fact that this is not too much of a jump from 2021, considering the fact that 2020 and 2021, those were the pandemic years. And there was obviously a massive jump in viewership and revenue generated from that, obviously during that period of time. So in 2022, revenue was still up, but that probably has gone down in 2023. And if we're looking at users and we're looking at streamers in 2020 and 2021, there was a massive spike in the amount of concurrent users for Twitch, but that's obviously gone down again in 2022. And I'm assuming that's probably also gone down again in 2023. And then Twitch streamers, even with this specific metric as well, Twitch streamers are essentially down. And if we look at hours watched in 2020, 18.6, 2021, 22.8, and that's going down too. And I'm imagining that in 2023, a lot of these figures have probably started trending downwards and they're expanding expecting that it's going to continue to trend downwards. And so when we start to think about how Twitch perceives the performance of the company to be in 2024 and beyond, I am assuming that their current workforce doesn't necessarily reflect being able to manage or to be able to efficiently deal with that because they essentially have way more people managing a company and managing a business, managing the operations for a company that would be performing a lot better than it actually is or that it actually will be performing. So essentially they're cutting the workforce to represent the fact that the company is not doing as well as it was a few years ago. And so they don't need as many people. They don't need as much to manage. To be honest, I feel like Dan has sugarcoated or somewhat simplified his explanation or justifications of why Twitch is cutting back, why they're reducing costs, why they're laying people off, why they're shutting down in certain other regions of the world. It makes sense. And I feel like he's explained it in a way 
way that people who want to dive in deeper to get more information or to relate this to a more constructive or complex understanding of what exactly is happening with Twitch, people are able to find that information. And that's somewhat of what I brought to you in this video today. And I want to leave you with this last clip where Dan provides some words of comfort for anyone that believes that their favorite live streamer or website might be going away. I think it's fair for me to do that. So check this out. We are still, you know, a reasonably sized organization. We're still going to be able to service your needs. We're still going to be able to improve the product. We won't be able to do as much as we would have done before, but I think we're still going to see a lot happening in 24 that you'll be very excited about. I know there's a lot of enthusiasm with some of the stuff that we talked about um, at TwitchCon. Coming up, we're going to be sharing some more about our plans for the year. We have a couple announcements coming up over the next few weeks that I think you'll be excited about. And our focus is on making Twitch the best place to live stream, the best place to build communities, because the foundation of Twitch are the communities that you and all the streamers here create. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. And I want to share something with you that I genuinely feel is the truth. And tell me if you agree with me or not. But I feel as if Dan, the new or recent CEO at Twitch, his position, his promotion, his job, whatever, was tempered with the understanding or the realization that he was going to be the bearer of bad news for a lot of bad news. And there's a lot of changes that are happening with Twitch that the community might not necessarily be so happy about, but Amazon and Twitch's corporate management genuinely believes is necessary. And it could be good. It could be a really good thing for Twitch because ultimately, if there is a recession, if things really are looking bad, if things are heading downwards, which they potentially could be, nobody knows the future, then imagine Twitch is the only live streaming company that really makes it through the hard times. And I'm not talking about how YouTube is not going to make it or might not make it. YouTube will definitely make it, but YouTube will never be Twitch. YouTube will never be able to compete with Twitch. YouTube will never be able to develop or build the type of community system that operates within Twitch. It's not going to happen. But if you look at some of these other competitors like Kick, for example, considering the amount of indiscriminate cash that they're spending, imagine trying to do that through a recession whilst also trying to compete with Twitch that was already prepared to deal with this type of situation. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that ultimately, Twitch has made some very difficult decisions. And ultimately, we all have to live with the consequences of our decisions, whether you're an individual or a large billion dollar corporation. It's as simple as that. So only time will tell how things will turn out. And when we get to that point, we'll know if it was worth it or not. And that's the bigger picture.